You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the clock cleaners podcast. I'm Matt and I'm Keith and today we'll be recapping Smackdown from August 29th. Yeah. So this is a pretty average show. Um, I think that's fair. Yeah, I guess so. Um, for me, ah. I was so like excited about Raw and how it went and everything. That when it carried over, it was kind of a letdown a little well, bit. Well, yeah, because I knew that SmackDown was never going to be able to compete with it. Yeah. Um, and then when the show started, that first segment just kind of completely destroyed like, there's no way this show is going to be any good. So. And everything, the perception of everything kind of just went downhill. So you're blaming this solely on gender? Um, sure. No. It's not just him. No, I know. But just the, the way it went in general. <clears throat> well, especially since it's been the B storyline. Eh, no. They, they really haven't been putting too much emphasis on the AJ no. Owen stuff. All right. They, yeah, I guess really, since Nakamura has gotten into the mix. They've, they've really downplayed it a lot. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. So the show opened with Jinder and the Singh brothers coming out to the ring. The Singh brothers apologized to Jinder mm-hmm. about how they got beat up by uh, Shinsuke last yeah. week. Apparently Jinder's still being disrespected, if you didn't know. Yeah, because, um, uh, what, after the match, or after they said that, he was saying that... Uh, that he's still getting disrespected. No, he started that off because he was hyping the main event. Oh, 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 he, okay. Yeah, yeah I, which this was a, it was a weird way to do this segment. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, we'll we'll go through it first. And yeah. Then... Well, actually, before anything happened, they made a they made an announcement that there was going to be a tag match between mm-hmm. uh, Randy Orton and Shinsuke against Jinder and Rusev. Yes. And that was before um, Jinder had come out, mm-hmm. and so I'm like. When it started, I'm like, I thought they said it was the main event. Why are they coming out first? Yeah, I, I was a little perplexed by that as well. Yeah. But yeah, then this whole thing happened, and like you said, uh, he's getting disrespected, and the same old same old stuff yeah, that he always says. That's, that's really the thing. It's just so one-dimensional. If mm-hmm. they added a little bit, I mean, I don't know what they would do because they've... It's. I mean, they could have just... He could have just simply said that he was just disrespected as a champion. Um, I mean, he did go into that, but I mean, that should be more of the focal point rather than being disrespected for the way he, you know. You know what I think? Huh. I think at this point, they're kind of just riding him out until he drops the title. Yeah. I was reading some weird stuff that I guess Jinder was going to hold the title until Cena comes back and then he was going to go back to SmackDown and win the title for from gender why I, I don't know it was just something i read don't know the truth that sounds like it. a bad idea i'm just saying um <clears throat> but i i honestly think that maybe they'll have him drop it soon possibly yeah. to shinsuke just and they're kind of just not being creative because there's really not much they can do with it yeah so they're like okay we'll just keep on going He he's getting heat from being boring too so <laughs> <clears throat> anyway uh um, what I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's just the way they've built him. He's, it's, it's nothing against him personally, you know. Yeah. It's just it's, not an interesting story that they're yeah, telling. Yeah, that's really because, like you said, we've said they've just made it about one thing and that own thing only. And yeah, there's no other conflict really. Yeah, there's no way of digging themselves out of that hole. It's true. The crowd's just going to focus on one thing, and that's going to be the end of it. Mm-hmm. But but uh but yeah, after he goes and complains the Singh brothers apologize for what happened last week yeah yeah they let shinsuke end up you know getting some offense in on uh jinder after the match yeah and they said that they would never let uh shinsuke touch him again mm-hmm. and then they offer to kiss his feet for some reason yeah and then they very awkwardly crawl towards his feet <laughs> and then at that point shinsuke comes out oh, thank god and uh, so he quickly gets beaten up. Uh, who came out first, Rusev or Orton. Orton? Yeah. Okay. Orton came to, I guess, even out the odds. And then uh, it kind of looked like they were getting the upper hand. And then Rusev came out. And uh, and then they kind of just laid Shinsuke and Orton out to, out to waste. Yeah. So why did they announce the match before the show? That's a hell of a question. They could have just did that, yep. and then all of a sudden did their, 
oh, Shane McMahon just made this match during the commercial break, so yeah. we're going to get a tag match. That would have made a lot more sense. A little think, bit. I think they really weren't thinking clearly. I don't oh. know. But yeah, that's kind of dumb. They did. They do one more thing like that later on that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> Furch... Furch? Fur, the Furch. First. The first match of the night was... Uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable's tag team debut. Yes, I, they thought they had announced their opponents last week. No, but I guess they, they didn't. Did. They just said they were uh, having their first match next week. Yeah, and so, I guessed who it was. Yeah, not a surprise here. They yeah. uh, faced the Ascension. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, surprisingly, the Ascension actually had a decent amount of offense. Yeah, well, it's not very often that tag team matches are complete squashes. No, but I figured they were bringing in Benjamin. It was the new tag team. They were going to kind of let them have their way. Yeah, I guess. But at the same time, it's better if they have actual oh, challenge. I, I agree with that 100%, but yeah. I'm just kind of... It seems that's the way they usually book things. Oh, yeah. It's fair. One side. It's kind of like Bobby Roode. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, last week, he very handily beat up uh, <clears throat> uh, in English, right? Yeah. No, that yeah, there was a little yeah back and forth there. Yeah, yeah, oh, but it was... what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... I got gotcha. you. Anyway, so yeah. but yeah, it was a it was a pretty good match. The two of them seemed to work pretty well together. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see Shelton back in the ring. He was such a good competitor when he was in WWE. It was always strange that he left. I don't know the under the uh, I guess the reason behind it. No, was I don't know if it was him wanting too much money or if it was them trying to move away from like the attitude. Well, not attitude era, but like the ruthless aggression era people. I have no idea. So. But either way, he's yeah. back. Yeah. Hopefully, they uh, they use him well. Yeah. With and, uh, and Chad Gable is really good. So mm-hmm. yeah, they got the win here. Not a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how Benjamin beat Victor. I just remember it was. I'm sure some kind of finishing move. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what it is. But, yeah. but moving on. Yep. So uh, Baron Corbin was being interviewed backstage by uh, Renee Young, mm-hmm. and asking about. Um, how he feels about his loot. failed cash in yeah. last week, <laughs> screwing up with the uh, with the briefcase, mm-hmm. and um, he's and not getting revenge at uh, SummerSlam. Oh yeah, for yeah. having Cena cost him his briefcase. Yeah. Um, and then he says, it's "Like, well, I have a number one contendership yeah. for the U.S. title mm-hmm. because AJ promised, so I'm gonna go get that yeah. now," <laughs> which was weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What I was kind of hoping they were going to do is, like, have someone stop him backstage. Like, have AJ go out and start the the challenge, mm-hmm. and then the camera pan to Corbin. Have someone stop him, and then somebody makes their way out, and it kind of happening every couple of weeks, so he kind of... Oh, just, yeah. like, in a comedic way. Right, exactly. Stopping him from, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Which they kind of did that in a little bit of a yeah. sense. Um, but, yeah, so uh, AJ came out and delivered the... U.S. Open Challenge, yes. to which Ty Dillinger answered. Which was a little surprising. A little bit. Especially for the first one, I figured it'd be Corbin, yeah. actually. But I guess they're going to build to uh, a AJ feud between the two yeah. of them. Um, so as soon as Dillinger's music hit, I'm like, okay, he's going to walk like two feet, and then he's going to get his ass kicked by yep. uh, Corbin. Mm-hmm. He actually makes it tw- pretty much towards the ring, and then Corbin runs up behind him and attacks him. Well, they were like, what the hell are you doing, man? This is supposed to be my match. Yeah. And, and then... Like, well, I came out here. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, Ty pushes him into, the, into like, the barricade on mm. the side. He gets to the ring, and that's when Corbin hits him. Um, and then Corbin goes into the ring, but Ty immediately comes in and knocks Corbin yeah. out, and he's like, ring the bell, ring the bell to the ref. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they this... finally ring the bell, and uh, Corb uh, then ties the one who's facing AJ. Yeah, this was a very short match. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think they got a little offense. AJ went to the outside, was going for the phenomenal forearm, but Ty caught him mm. and was going to hit him with a tiebreaker. AJ reversed it and then put him in the calf crusher, and Ty tapped out almost almost right immediately. Away. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> and then Corbin attacked Ty after the match. Yeah. And then him and 
AJ were kind of well, yeah, because he attacked he attacked Ty, he pulled mm-hmm. him out of the ring, and then he ran into the ring to uh, attack AJ, yeah. but AJ immediately hit him with the forearm. Yeah, and then he, he left the ring and started and all, yelling at the announcers, smacking the announce table. Yeah. so yeah, this looks like the he was direction. A fit. Yeah, but yeah, I'd assume we'll be getting Corbin and AJ at. Hell in a cell, I guess. I yeah. guess so. Um, up next, there was a Rusev and Jinder backstage mm-hmm. segment where... Um, I thought we were going to get the League of Nations part two here. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Jinder says something about uh, us, uh, called, called Rusev his friend. Mm. Well, not his friend, but he called him friend. Yeah, an ally. Yeah, and Rusev's like, I'm not your friend. Yeah. And when we're done with this tag team match, I'm coming after yeah. that. I think at one point Rooster said, we're not going to make no ride-along show or something. Yes, we will not make no ride-along. Um, and I think it was right after this, they played the graphic for the number one contendership match between Orton okay, and that's, Nakamura. that's when it was, yeah. Yeah. So, why? You know what I mean? Like, why would you announce that when they're ta- teaming together this week? kind of add some tension to the team. Yes, but they kind of they screwed up the the way they did it. Yeah. Um, but it makes no sense to have them, or at least announce it already. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the pay per view being so far away, them teaming together that night. Right. It just it seems like it's a, a I guess out of order booking decisions. A bit. And I mean, you would think Shinsuke would have to. Win the match. Well, obviously, Shinsuke is <laughs> going to win, but still. Um, but yeah, it, it, I don't really like the way they did it, but whatever. Yeah, no, <clears throat> I get it. All right, so uh, up next was uh, Bobby Roode's second match, or mm-hmm. Booby Roode, de- depending <laughs> on who you ask. Um, Mike Canellis. They did that. Yeah, Mike Canellis versus uh, Bobby Roode. Um, and Roode came out, big ass smile on his face. Um,. I think because we kind of speculated that maybe he was, he's being uh, booked, booked as a face. face. Yeah, I think that we're wrong. I think I, he's what? Keep going. I'll, right. I'll tell you. In a I I think they're gonna present him as a face, mm-hmm. and then once he gets into a real feud, he's just gonna go out all out heel like yeah. he was in NXT. Well, I read an article that said that. Once he transitions to a heel, they're gonna remove the whole glorious thing. Why? I I don't know. I'm just telling you what I read. Things you read are stupid. It's true, <laughs> but it's just odd. Yeah. Like because it it got over so well in NXT. Well, he was basically an entrance that was Bobby Roode. <laughs> That's true. I guess maybe they didn't really it outshined want... his any. I mean, you know, he's yeah. not the greatest in ring performer. He's good, but. You know. Yeah, maybe they don't want him to just be that. Then that would make that's sense. That's perfect for the main roster. It's true, but whatever. <clears throat> maybe they they think high, more highly of him. Yeah. So this was another short match. Uh, Rude ended up getting the one with the glorious DDT. To be so, expected. Yeah. Question for you. Wow. With the rumored shakeup that they were planning on doing after SummerSlam. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's happening. I know. But there was talk about them sending people back down to NXT. This would be the perfect time to send Canellis and down. He never should have ne- debuted I don't, on SmackDown. The weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> you, you bring a guy like Finn Balor in, he has to go through, what was he there, over a year in NXT? Two years. Two years. And then you bring a guy like, you know, Mike Canellis, who he's semi-known, but to the casual fan, they would have no idea who he is. Certainly not with the last name. <clears throat> well, yeah, right. But, Which is a shame because he's a good wrestler, and uh, I don't know. They make weird decisions. I yeah. think they thought the power of love thing was going to be more over. That's probably what the problem was. <laughs> Who would think this would get over? The WWE <laughs> thinks a lot of stupid things uh, are going to work. Oh, man. Hey, let's move on. Speaking of not getting over, so Aiden English was in the ring, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess he was going to have a match. Was did he start to sing? Yeah, he started to sing, do his little nonsense. <laughs> And then Owens comes out and tells him, he says, these Arkansas hillbillies don't appreciate your talent. Just get out of the ring. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then he kind of just leaves. Yeah. Well, he doesn't leave. He goes outside of the Mm -hmm. ring. And then uh, Owens goes on about what happened last week and Mm -hmm. how he was screwed by Shane. Yep. 
so on and so forth. And apparently a year ago, he had won the Universal title. Yeah, it was definitely uh, interesting, the timing, that yeah. it was uh, a, He's a like, year. Yeah, I won the U- uh, Universal title a year ago, and now I'm getting screwed out of the U.S. title. <laughs> yep. This year. And he this also BS. said... What? Hey, no, I just said this oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. He also said that if it, um, Shane's a terrible GM, and if it was Stephanie, he this, wouldn't have this problem. This would have never happened. Yeah. That's why he should have stayed on Raw. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, and then Shane comes out, mm-hmm. um, explains, uh, what happened because he picked Baron Corbin last week and there was clearly a bias against or for him, uh, Owens, I mean, um, on Corbin's behalf. So Shane had to step in and then Corbin choose or chose, chose to, to leave. leave. Yep. And that's when Shane, um, stepped in. There was no other official there. I had nothing else. I had nothing else to do. He had no other choice. Mm-hmm. So, and then pretty much at that point, Owens is throwing a fit, and Shane's like, "Okay, you don't have a match right now, but Aiden English, you do. So, get, Owens, you get out of the ring. <laughs> Aiden English, you get into the ring, and you have a match with this man. And then Sammy's, Sammy Zayn's music mm-hmm. hits. Yeah. Um, yeah. That leads yeah. into Aiden English versus Sammy Zayn yep. with Kevin Owens on commentary, yeah. which we kind of." Had to figure it was yeah. going to happen. And it's always so good. Oh, my God. Especially considering, you know, making fun of Byron. and yeah. A depressed Owens, apparently, is a very strong <laughs> Owens on commentary. I forget what he said. Well, he was just feeling sorry for himself the whole time. Yeah, I know, but his uh, zinger to Byron. Well, no, he just said that you're useless. Stop talking. Yeah, no but one cares I think he said th- something. No one cares what you have to say. Yeah. Um, And he did it a couple of times because yeah. Byron kept on trying to poke him. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> shut up, Byron. So, um, but yeah, it was a kind of a regular match between Aiden English and Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Um, but like halfway through the the match, Owens is going on about how there's no referee in the mm-hmm. WWE. Like, this guy can't even do his job. Yeah, and they all suck and they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So at this point, he gets up, grabs the referee, rips his shirt off of him, <laughs> and then he puts Which the it referee on was wearing a large shirt. Or a la- larger than normal yeah. shirt at the very least. So now Kevin Owens decided that he's going to be the referee mm-hmm. in the match. And I think he let him go for a couple seconds, and he's like, nope, yeah, screw it, this. Yeah, it wasn't long. <clears throat> so Sami Zayn was going, I guess, running at Aiden English. He grabs Sami Zayn, throws him into the ropes, hits mm-hmm. him with the pop-up powerbomb, <clears throat> and then Aiden English is able to pin him. And uh, Owens, for good measure, just does a fast count. Yep. But he doesn't tell the... the, the the bell keeper whatever yeah timekeeper time keeper, there you go yeah he doesn't tell the timekeeper to ring the bell so it <laughs> took a while yeah which after this we had a backstage segment with renee young and shane mcmahon and renee asked shane what he thought about what just happened mm-hmm. shane said the match doesn't count uh sammy zane doesn't get a loss yeah <laughs> so <clears throat> ah. so uh up next we had uh dasha interviewing Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, this is not good. Apparently, you know, like he said last week, this week we were supposed to get his the debut of his new gimmick. Yeah. So basically, he just starts running down everybody, everyone. Called what he started with Elias, right? Yeah. We're gonna just run around with the guitar. Yeah. Singing. Um. He he said something about Finn. He called him a. a what, oh, he called him a charisma vacuum. A vacuum, yeah. but I I think he called him the demon guy. Yeah, because he's oh, what's gonna happen? Get paint poured on me like yeah. Finn Balor. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was it was pretty much the same thing he said yeah. last week and said that now next week yeah. he's gonna debut his new gimmick, yeah. which means that they're gonna be doing this for a while. Yep. So I don't know. It's hard to get excited for anything Dolph Ziggler does. Mm-hmm. So except when he goes to GFW. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He hasn't been on TV long it's enough, true. so yeah, it's, it's basically, like he's not even there. The whole reason for this is he said that he's put in all these years of work and he's got nothing to show for it. Yeah, so he's which, upset. I understand that, but it's not going to be a gimmick to get, you know? It's not oh, going to no, get no, over. No, 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 no. Like, I get his frustration, but... It's not going to do him any no, good. it's not going to help in any yeah. way. All right, so um, up next we have the Usos versus the New Day where the winner of the match gets to choose the stipulation for their upcoming title match. Yeah. And uh, we had learned previously, I think it was during the day it was announced, maybe, that uh, Xavier Woods got hurt over the weekend at a house show, yeah. I think. So uh, the New Day come out, and 
Xavier Woods has a sign hanging from his neck that says, It's sore. Yeah, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Because usually they don't like acknowledge injuries mm-hmm. too much that don't happen on TV. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. The third knee injury in two weeks. Yeah, it's been a lot with Joe, him, and uh, Cash. Yes, yeah. So, but yeah. Um. Anyway. So yeah, this was weird because everybody got in the ring. They didn't ring the bell yet, and we cut to commercial immediately mm-hmm. before the match yeah. started. Mm-hmm. So, but I think they're taking a little liberties with this. This whole in between. Right, and this is the perfect match to do it because it's not like it's something new we haven't seen before. It's true. It's, it's the, I mean, but they're it, always going to put on a decent match together. But it's it, just that. it is funny that the match started during commercial. Mm-hmm. It's not very often that no. that happens. Um, but this is a, a pretty good match, yeah. which is standard it's, for it's, them. It's standard, absolutely. Um, after a blind tag. Yeah, Jimmy rolled up. Kofi, because mm-hmm. uh, I guess Kofi was holding on to Jay, mm-hmm. and then he was able to tag Jimmy in, and Jimmy ended up getting the roll up, uh, on, rolling Kofi up, grabbing a handful of tights. Yeah, that's a very yeah. common. Pro- oh, okay, yeah, and then immediately he rolls out of the ring because right, yeah. they mm-hmm. stole the victory. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so now the uh, Usos get to pick the stipulation for their uh, title defense, I guess. Right? Their next. Yeah, match? their Is next. That, their next. Their, title uh, the New Day's uh, Re- uh, rematch, rematch clause. Um, surprisingly it's going to be at the hell well we're not sure if it's yeah, definitely I was, going i was gonna say they didn't announce that it's going to be at the hell in a cell pay-per-view oh, but they also haven't announced that that's what's going to be smackdown's next pay-per-view right. yet so assuming that it stays the same as it's like yeah already i guess planned they're just waiting until they start talking about the pay-per-view before they actually start which makes sense yeah the only other type of match they could do but it wouldn't make sense in the situation had they, the Usos, not been holding the tag belts. As you do the shark cage and have the third man in the shark cage, so you'd have an even. I guess. I mean, like I said, if if the Usos had lost because of the third man, I was going to say that really hasn't yeah. been the case though. No, I know, but I'm just saying that would be the only other really match that would seem to make sense. Yeah, I guess so. I don't. Still, those matches are stupid. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, up next we had a uh, interview. Well, just the start of an interview. Dasha was going to interview Carmella, mm-hmm. and uh, as soon as Dasha, I think, had the microphone, Ellsworth came and grabbed it. But yeah, he he told her to take a hike. Yeah, and then uh, um, Carmella was yelling at Ellsworth because he was blabbing about the plans last week because it ruined Carmella everything. Was going to cash in on Natalia. Um, and so he was apologizing for it and everything. Mm-hmm. Would he send her flowers and some, something else? Did you steal flowers from a funeral? <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Oh, what was it say? Deepest apologies or yeah. something like that? Deepest, deepest consolaces. Yeah, that's Cons- what it was. Consolaces. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that, um, Car- not Carmela, Natalia mm-hmm. comes up and she sa- she calls Carmela the 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 next Baron Corbin. Yeah, or something she says like if that. you'd plan to cash in, I'm gonna make you look like a Baron Corbin. Dude. Yeah, it was a good shot. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. They're really burying him so much. Oh well. Um, I mean, he, he was into it again on Twitter with somebody. Really? Yeah. Just some people don't learn. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, then they they announced that they have a match next week. Um, for some reason. Yeah. Again, I still think it's weird that Money in the Bank. Is holder is feuding the with the holder. title yeah. yeah but you know whatever mm-hmm. um after that carmella leaves N- natalia turns around yeah, and always. naomi comes up mm-hmm. and she says that in two weeks i have a match against you for or i have my rematch against you and i'm taking my title back mm-hmm. and uh that was it yeah so <clears throat> up next we had the only in-ring woman segment yes with tamina versus I guess her name was Tina Stock. Sure. I don't know. Um, Jobber. Yeah. So Alana came out after the Jobber was out there and yeah. introduced Tamina to a lot of crickets. Yeah. Well, and Tamina certainly hasn't created any kind of like buzz towards her. Well, I like the whole idea. I don't know if Lana's going to be the right person to get her over. Uh, I don't think. I don't think that. Like I like the idea. Like you said, yeah. I don't. I don't know if the pair, either of them, are gonna 
could do it. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody who's going to get Tamina over. No. it's If it works, I'd be okay with it. Mm-hmm. I like That's why I like the idea. I just don't know how well of an, or how well the idea is going to play out. So. Yeah. But who knows? It's weird. It, again, it's the same, same thing we've been talking about for months now, the, the women's division on SmackDown. It's just... It's lost. Yeah. And especially, I mean... You you have the whole May Young classic going on, mm-hmm. and you're gonna have women that are gonna be signed, and just who knows yeah, where they're going. I don't know where they're going. Like, like I've heard a lot of people just saying they're not even watching the May Young classic because it's just women wrestling. Well, you know that's probably the consensus with a lot of people, with the casual fan and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean if. The WWE is planning on doing like a woman's show or something like that. They're going to need support. Which I think, I don't know if maybe instead of having NXT be split, maybe have a women's developmental show. Because you're going to have a ton of women mm-hmm. down. I don't know how many people they're actually signing. I know a handful of them, they were already signed. And I mean, yeah. some people already in the tournament have been on That's NXT true. recently. Um, so I, I, I really knows? don't know what their direction is here. But yeah. with the, It's hard to predict. Especially, I mean, it was, I mean, Raw was surprising this week, and we had two women's segments, or two women's matches. Well, they, they kind of, they've been doing that. Yeah, well, they do have three hours. We only had one Cruiserweight segment, so I guess that offsets it. Yeah, so. Anyway... But yeah, so uh, Tamina during, won. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I was Go gonna on. say during the match, Lana had the microphone on the outside, screaming instructions. To, Crush. Uh, yeah, to Tamina. So, and uh, Tamina hit a super kick for the win. Mm-hmm. So, after the match, when she threw the woman out of the ring, her oh, head hit yeah. the rope. Yeah, and she's sp- like. It just looked bad. Yeah, I was going to say, I was watching, I'm like, that's not how yeah. you throw him out of the ring. Because you could see Tamina look constantly, her eyes on, on the, the woman when, uh, After I guess they had f- two photographers get in the ring and they were taking, uh, having a photo shoot. Yeah, she wanted to make sure she was okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, was a, that was quite a botch. It just doesn't help when you're trying to build somebody up and something like this happens. Yeah, because who the hell knows what's going to happen yeah. if they're actually doing like real stuff because that's a very simple thing throwing right. someone out of the yeah. ring well i mean this you know said the same thing's been said for naya too i guess but she yeah. seems to be better i i, I think that because people kind of blamed her for bailey getting hurt right yeah but i think that was more of uh it wasn't necessarily her fault but there's just she was there for wrong it. place wrong type deal yeah yeah um anyway mm-hmm Let's move on to The Fashion Files, yes. Season 2. Mm-hmm. So I guess that means they really do plan on going at it for a while, which is fine. I'm They're fine entertaining. With, nothing. Look, we're getting two entertaining guys on TV consistently. If they were not doing this, they wouldn't be on TV. It's true. Or they would be the ones who jobbed to uh, um, Gable. And, and, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, this one... Uh, they they kind of like took all of their they like completely started over because mm-hmm. and then they they actually when they cut to the office they had a box for each of their previous yeah. cases yeah it was like uh, fashion peaks mm-hmm. um the, uh, fashion files the fashion well no that it was the um, wasn't fashion files because that's what it's always been called the fashion x files yeah right? the fashion yes. x files the uh, I can't remember what the other ones were. It's something with not Walker Texas Ranger or something. Well, like that. no, that was that, that was, was on the bottom. That and during the um the credits to it, still not starring yeah. Chuck Norris. Yeah. That was good. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they say that it's a new season after our vacation. Mm-hmm. But then the panda goes like, "Crime doesn't take vacations." Yeah. yeah, neither do we. And so he takes all this stuff off. Yeah. And he's like, uh, "Yeah, the boys in the back gave us new uh new whatever I don't remember equipment. What equipment, I guess that's what it was." Um. So I guess one was a, a set of headphones, which looked a lot like uh, when Cesaro and um, Tyson Kidd Tyson Kid had, yeah. And then they had a a black light. So they were going on about that. I don't remember what they said exactly before they actually used it. Yeah, I don't know. And then uh, Fandango picks up a belt on the table, and uh, Pyle Breeze goes, "Do you know what that is?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's a title." And he's like, "No, that's a belt." And he's like, "Um." It's like, yeah, you wear it around your pants, or you, he's going you wear it over. to keep your pants yeah, up. Yeah. So this was a 
kind of a... Um, I guess a shot. Yeah. Because apparently Vince doesn't like people calling the titles belts. Yeah. Apparently they, um, Strowman had a lot of heat on him months back when he had called it the belt on live TV. That's so dumb. I, I agree. But, makes no sense. But it, it was good. They're also not allowed to call them feuds, right? Was that the word? Yeah, I don't remember. I know there's a whole list. Yeah, so... Oh, Vince, you silly, yeah. silly man. So at this point, they use the black light to to tell the Tyler claps. Yeah, he and the lights go out. Yeah, so he uses the black light, and they're fixated on the shirts. So they're like, "Oh, wow, that's a really cool shirt you got," yeah. on, which they're wearing the fashion police. Shirt. Yeah, I guess those are pretty new. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they use the light, and they see that on the boxes there's an arrow. Yeah. So and then the arrow points from one box to another, another. Mm-hmm. and then from the other box to the other, and it ends up going in a circle, yeah, a triangle, yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah, yeah I got you. It's the same, yeah, yeah. It's so the same um, direction. they keep on going. Uh, Breeze keeps on going back and forth, and he's like spinning it around, and then <laughs> here, um, here, here, here. and then Fandango figures out that the top one is turned around. Mm. So he turns the box around, and it points at a sign on uh, the, I guess the chalkboard yeah. that says two B. And, and then, then, yeah, in the invisible ink, it says, uh, or not to be. Yeah. So. Which is a Shakespeare reference. Mm-hmm. And then, and then they're they like. they say, oh, artists. And then the one says Nakamura and the other one says Bob Ross. And then they, <laughs> and then Dango was saying something and Breeze was like, speak English. And then they go, oh, eat in English. Yeah. So they're, they're making huge stretches again. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess they think that eating English is behind. I don't know. I'm guessing they're still trying to figure out who destroyed their office. office. I guess that's where we're at. All right. So uh, I guess we'll find out. They were the Bollywood boys, and now they're not. It's true. Anyway, I guess we'll figure (laughs) out more next week. We'll see. Yep. All right. Moving on to the main event. Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal and Rusev. (laughs) What? Mahal and Jinder are not a tag team, you're No, saying? apparently not. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, this was just standard tag match. Yeah. Uh, Rusev no. and Mahal look decent together. Yeah. Well, Rusev's good with anybody. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Um, well, I guess those rumors about them leaving the company are completely put to rest. <laughs> so I might have been drunk when I was writing. <laughs> apparently. So, uh, but yeah, the the match ended with uh, Shinsuke hitting a Kinshasa on Rusev. Not a big surprise, because you know that they don't really want to make the WWE champion look too weak. No. Um, so, after the match, uh, Orton and uh, Shinsuke are celebrating. And at this point, we had already known that the two of them were fighting next week. Right. And I'm sitting there, I'm like... After them, as soon as the match ends, like weird, awkward yeah. moment, and then they, you know, kind of look at each other. Shinsuke's looking toward the Titan Tron and yeah. just doing his thing, and then he kind of looks back and Orton looks at him, and then he hits him with an RKO. Yeah, but I was thinking that as soon as the bell rang, mm-hmm. I thought that Randy should have hit him, and then yeah. that's where the the thing should have ended. Oh, at the end of the match? Yeah, yeah, as soon as the match ended. So I had an interesting thing way they could have gone with this match. Why? Completely special and wouldn't happen but they should have had it where whoever got the pin in the match got the number one contender. that would make a lot more and then if jinder won he wouldn't have to defend his title that that's that would have been significantly better than because then rusev would have been or jinder would have been going for the pin and then rusev would have tried to pull him off they could have just made it interesting yeah i feel like but you know we don't like to do things that make sense on SmackDown. No, not really. But, but whatever. This being an average show really isn't a huge surprise just for the simple fact that they have, what, Forever a month and between, a half? yeah. Something like that? That and the fact that SmackDown's been blah to begin with. So. Yeah, well, that is true. So, yeah, this was our SmackDown review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.